Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial on Paraview. So this is the tutorial number 9 and uh, I am Cyprian from F here for all. So in this tutorial we'll have a look at the different ways to make selection of your data in Paraview. I'll show you how to pinpoint some cells in your model or some nodes and how you can select them in various ways and also how to extract the selection and how to follow a cell that have been selected, how to plot over time the data in one cell. So we'll see all those things in this video. So stay tuned and if you have any questions during the video, something you don't understand very, very well, just leave a comment on the video. Also, if you like this series, you have been watching it up, up to now, please give a like to this video. This uh, is extremely useful for uh, my channel. So, without any further comment, let's start. Let's start by resetting all the view by clicking on this button, Reset Section. If you do that, everything you did will uh, come back to, to normal. Um, and let's open the example model that I was working with in the previous video, can.x2. Uh, don't forget to load all the variables by clicking on the small uh, tick here, apply. So we get something like that. And if you remember, I've shown you the how to play with time and with the animation view and all of that. So in this video, I'll look again at plastic strain and let's go to the next step. And in order to make the colors look good, I'll click on uh, rescale to data range. Okay, so now let's consider the scenario that, okay, it's cool, I have those colors. I see more or less that, uh, you know, I have big plastic strain in this region. Um, but let's say that I want to be exact. I want to know exactly in which area uh, I have plastic strain, which goes over 1.5. And for that, there is a way in, uh, in Paraview which is very useful. So that's the first way to select that I'll show you. So it's called Find Data Matching. So you can find the icon here in the, in the toolbar, or you can go in the Edit, Find Data, or you can push the V, uh, the v on your keyboard. Once you go into the fi Find Data, so this uh, Find Data tool is extremely useful. You can that you can select the data you want to look at. So here I'm, look at, I'm looking at the equivalent plastic strain and I want data which is superior or equal to 1.5. So enter 1.5, run the selection query and you see that it finds automatically all the cells um, that I want. And if I look at the screen at the same time, my cell have been selected on the screen. And if I close this, the cell remains selected. So that's that's the first way to you can use to, to select some cells in your model. Extremely useful way. Now the second way that I have shown very briefly in the second video, I think, is to use the small icons which are on this bar. Now let's look deeper into what those small icons actually do. So the first icon which is uh, helpful is this one, the last one, clear selection. This will remove any selection you have already. Now um, let's suppose, okay, let's, let's have a look. So let's start with this one, the first one, cells, select cells on. So if you use this one to select cells, so I'm clicking on that and then I select cells like this, what it will do is that it selects the cells at the surface of my selection. So you see I'm, I'm looking at the view below my model, I'm selecting this square and the cells here are selected, but the cells which are on the other side of the model, of course they are not selected because I'm, look, I'm selecting the surface uh, of the model here. Now if I cancel and I look at the third icon, which is called Select Cells Through, so this one is select cells on and this one is uh, select cells through. If I select this and I do the same, 
trick. Now all the cells through the model are selected. So that's the difference between those two. You have the select cells on, which selects on the surface, and you have the through, which selects all over uh, the model. Now let's go back. Now you have select cells with polygon. So, and this one will basically, you can draw a polygon like that. And this will select the cells within this polygon. So I've shown you select cells, but you have exactly the same thing if you want to select points. So if you choose select point on, it will select the nodes uh, here at the surface. And if you select, if you use select points through, it will select all the nodes uh, through the model. So this, those are the ways that you can use selection. And you see, you have also hover. Or you have two. You have several things. You have hover point on, hover cells on. So if I use the hover cells, for example, I, I'm seeing like that. Um, I'm seeing the selection, the cells that will be se selected when I move the mouse. So it's not necessarily recommended to use that because it uses more memory. It has to recalculate uh, in function of the move of your uh, mouse. So if you have a computer which is not that fast, well, maybe just unactivate this. Um, and and when you have, uh, so did I talk about everything? Oh, okay. There's also this. Um, you have some options for the selection, add selection and subtract selection. So those are selection modes. So let's say that I selected some cells with selection on. And basically I selected some cells that I didn't want here. Uh, but because this selection is, was quite complex, I don't want to redo all the selection. Uh, I can use this. So I'll use a subtract mode. And then when I when I use, for example, select cells with polygon, I can just like that draw the selection here. And you see that instead of adding all those cells, it subtract them from my current selection. So I'm able to refine the selection using the selection modes like this, which is pretty useful. And in the icons I didn't show yet, there is also uh, this one. This is interactive cells select on. And I don't see by default, I don't see any value, but this is useful if you choose a value in the selection display inspector. So I'm choosing the equivalent plastic strain. And now when I over uh, my model on the result like that, I have the value of the equivalent plastic strain uh, over the model. So can be pretty useful and I can click to uh, lock down a value here. So this is another way to, to use that. In case you don't have the selection dis display inspector, uh, just go into view toolbar, uh, no, 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 not toolbar, view and just here you have the selection display inspector. So activate it. Okay, that's it for now. Now let's play a bit more with the find data uh, tool. So op open again the find data box and let's have a look at some, let's say some data that I selected here. So let's, so just opening the box like that. And then at the same time, I'm going to, uh, I select a certain selection. So remark that I don't want to see, um, the labels anymore, so I, I hide them for now. So I have this selection here. Let's look at the other option we have. So we have, for example, uh, invert selection. So it can be useful if, let's say, you, you want to you want to select all the other data. Um, and we have free selection. So before uh, showing you what this does. Um, let me show you how to activate the region. So it's called the fulcrum. I don't know why it's called like that, but 
uh, no, not fulcrum, frustrum base selection. So this is basically a selection based on um, a certain geometry. So you see that uh, all the section I have done here are within this uh, this kind of rectangle uh, geometry. So it looks like that because I think it's uh, in isometric or mode or something. Anyway, um, now the the stuff is that uh, if you remember, I'm looking at data over time. I'm not looking at only at one time step. So if I play with the time step, let's say I go back in time, what you can see is that basically the selected cells change in function of what is inside this geometry. So if I want to spot one, uh, one area and just look at you know, what happens in this zone, then I could stay like that. But if I, I'm interested in a certain group of cells and I don't want the cells to change, uh, then I need to freeze the selection. So that, that's why you have this freeze selection option. Uh, let's have a look. So if I come back at the same selection I had before and now I click on freeze selection and I go back in time and you see that the cells that were initially within this geometry, they are still selected. They go out and now you can see um, can see all the cells that have been selected uh, at the end. So that's that's a pretty uh, useful thing. Now you have also uh, extract selection. So if I click on that and I click on apply like this, let's close this window. It will uh, it will basically extract all the cells uh, selected. And let's let's reset the data like that. Um, so I have extracted in a separate set the data that are on the uh, that have been selected. So a nice way also to represent that is to uh, activate the previous tool set and decrease the opacity like this and now you're able to see uh, kind of this transparent shape and uh, the selected cell within so it's uh, it's pretty cool now let's hide that let's go back to this let's show the opacity again and let me show you also something very useful called um, to plot data over time because one thing we also we are pretty interested in is okay I have uh, I have those data but I want to know you know I want to point at one cell and see what was the strain value over time on this cell so extremely useful and simple thing to do go in so open again the find element and let's say I want to look at the maximum. So I'll choose uh, equivalent plastic strain, is max, run the query. Um, you see that by default, okay, let me run them all. I don't know where it is. Let's, so let's go in cell label and show it. So it's some, somewhere like somewhere uh, here. So the maximum strain cell is somewhere there, right? Um, and now I'd like to plot that over time. So plot selection over time. And nothing happens because I have to apply. And when I apply here, I'm able to see um, the value over time. Now be very careful because uh, you don't forget what I showed you right before. Uh, my find query filter was um, is max, so, but the thing is that the filter is rerun at every time step. So what this curve is actually drawing here is not the same element. It's basically every time steps it finds the elements that are the maximum that have the maximum 
strain and then it plots the value of the maximum strains within the model but not for one cell so if i wanted to 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 do that only for one cell i would have to freeze the selection like i i showed to you before so equivalent plastic strain is max let's go to the last yeah run the section query and now free selection and plot the section over time apply and now i'm looking at um, i'm looking at this the same element plotted over time one last thing to note is that this extract selection that i did before is also a filter so if i want to um, select some cells through like this and control space extract selection enter apply you see that i can do exactly the same thing so that's pretty useful if i want to uh, to look only at this uh, those data here um, also if you want to look at those data into a spreadsheet you can like that open second window and open the spreadsheet view and you you'll have all the data included in this uh, in this window within this spreadsheet so pretty useful uh, because you can link both you can select some cells here and the cells will be automatically selected within this view and here you have some filters to um, show only selected elements so if you do that only the selected elements will be shown so if i on i turn off the selection I, I select only this element here i'm i'm looking at uh, the points because this is uh, this has eight points so I'm looking at the eight points of this uh, element. And that's all for this video. So that was the in-depth video about selection. So now you, you know more or less uh, the most important ways to do selection in Paraview. I hope it was useful. If it was, please uh, let me know. Leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, uh, like my video. Thank you very much again for watching all that and see you in the next videos.